Welcome to the Selling from the Heart podcast on the SalesCast Network. You've joined a global movement of sales professionals who are dedicated to being authentic and building trust. We call it Selling from the Heart. Together, we are on a mission to bring sincerity and substance to the sales profession we all love. Get ready to be inspired and equipped as we join our hosts, Larry Levine and Daryl Amy. I'm thrilled to introduce to you a revolutionary tool that will change the way you understand yourself and others. Our partners at the Y Institute have created the Y.OS Discovery Platform, a powerful tool that in just 10 minutes can help you uncover your core motivations, how you bring them to life, and what others can expect from you. This is more than just a self-awareness tool. It's a game changer for coaches and those who wanna help their clients reach their full potential. If you're a coach or a sales leader, Go to whyinstitute.com and look for the Y certification. We'll put the link in the show notes. When you reach out to the Y Institute, let them know you heard about it on Selling from the Heart, and you'll be on your way to helping your people discover what drives them. Don't just take our word for it. Go to whyinstitute.com and see the powerful impact the Y.OS discovery can have on your life. Hello and welcome back to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your co-host, Daryl Amy, here today with Larry Levine. What's going on, Larry? Another great day here at Selling from the Heart. Great seeing you, Daryl. We're in for a treat today. Let me tell. Let me tell. Uh, We got the story selling method, the man himself, Philip Hum. This is going to be an amazing conversation. And here we are. We're kicking off a new year. 2024 is here. We got great things ahead. I know this is a time of year where we're all planning. Uh, you know, we've made those New Year's resolutions. We've set our goals and all of that. And the real question is, how are you going to stay on track? And Larry, I got an idea. Oh, okay. Tell us. can stay on track. Will you tell us? I'll share it with you right now. It's the daily dose of inspiration. <laughs> hey, Larry Levine, the man himself, every morning serves up a fresh dose of inspiration. And if you need a way to stay focused, stay fired up, um, and stay connected to your authentic self. I double dog dare you to get the daily dose of inspiration and read it every day. Larry, it's such a gift uh, to the selling community. And I want to make sure everyone in our audience knows about it. No, and I appreciate you you sharing that. And I will tell you this, and I shared it last year when when you brought this up as well. These are fresh ideas. These aren't repeated. Every single day, I think about something I put it in words and I promise you this, I'll leave you at the end with something to think about that you can immediately put out into the field and put into action. Super gift. It's actually absolutely free. (laughs) Just click the link in the show notes or go to our website, sellingfromtheheart.net slash daily. And Larry, I love the conversations we get to have with our friends in the Selling from the Heart community. And it's always great hearing from people that are, are reaching out that we meet through the show. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I have to give a special shout out just to somebody who's just what a great heartfelt leader in a gentleman named Brian Shaner. Mm -hmm. And this person is leading a great, well-known company out there. He's leading it from a heartfelt place. Amazing things are happening. Brian, we sincerely appreciate you here at Selling from the Heart. Yeah, hats off. And I love this community of authentic sales professionals and leaders that's arising. And one of the things when it comes to authenticity and building trust, the power of story is incredible. And I'm so excited today that we're going to hear from Philip Hum. He's the visionary behind the story selling method. And Philip has revolutionized the way we think about sales and storytelling. His innovative approach merges the art of narrative with effective sales techniques, creating unique and impactful methods for connecting with clients and prospects. Philip's got an impressive background. It spans various roles and industries. And the best thing about Philip is his stuff's not just theory. It's rooted in real world experience. So as we get ready to dive into our conversation with Philip, I'm excited to uncover the secrets of the story selling method and to learn how story selling can transform our approach to sales in business communication. Philip, welcome to the Selling from the Heart podcast. It is great to have you here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Daryl and Larry, for having me. I'm excited to be spending the next half hour with you. Oh, it's all great. Great seeing you again. <laughs> well, Philip, as we get started, you know the question that every guest on the Selling from the Heart podcast answers. 
And that is, what does it mean to you, Philip, to sell from the heart? I was actually just thinking <laughs> about that. And I think that changed a little bit over the years because I was just reflecting back when I started in sales. And I think I was very much just in my mind, right? I go, went into these sales calls and I thought, ah, let me make this sale, right? This will make me more money. This will uh, be good for my business, so on, right? I focused 100% of myself. But what I realized now, how this changed and how selling from the heart evolved for me was right now, before every single sales conversation that I have, I focus on what is the value that I can actually bring to my prospect? So how mm-hmm. can I change their life? And that can become from um, either uh, resolving some pain that they have or getting into that future pleasure that they can get through storytelling. So right now, selling from the heart means tuning into, okay, how can I help the customer become better at what they are? Oh, hey, Philip, I love that you just said this. And, and there's a favorite saying we have here at Selling from the Heart. And, and I think it sums up exactly what you just said, Daryl. It's all about giving a rip. And it's just walking into every convert. By the way, Philip, that's a polite way of saying it. We can insert a couple other words, but that's a polite way of just saying <laughs> that we truly care, right? Is yeah. just walking into every conversation. Because part of the trust formula that uh, we have here at Selling from the Heart is meaningful value. And that's what you're talking about is walking into every conversation, showing that you care, that you're there to bring some kind of meaningful value to help them become better. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, it's so powerful. And it often takes some years almost to realize that because every time that also I give that advice to others, they're like, oh, sure. Yeah, focus on the <laughs> others. The same I, right? For years, I didn't understand <laughs> it only until I really started practicing that. So really focusing on the value of the others, it just makes you a much, uh, much better communicator, much easier to connect with the other person. Well, and I think this concept of story is extremely powerful uh, as well, because story is the language of the heart. And I know as a sales professional, you know, there's a way a way we can walk in and, and think about how it's going to benefit them and still be motivated, uh, you know, and, and come in with that, as Larry likes to say, commission breath uh, behind that. But there's a sincerity that that needs to be communicated beyond the facts of the benefits and um, the features and, and all of that. So the story selling method, um, unpack that for us. And, and where did that all come from? <laughs> yeah. So the story selling method is my book on yeah, an attempt to solve the problem of how do you tell stories in sales? Why do I care so much about it? Well, back in the days, when I started to get a little bit more into storytelling, I thought, hey, let me try to use stories in my sales conversations. And so I still remember on one of these calls, I <laughs> hopped on the call with that CEO of the certification company in Germany. And in that call, we have a good conversation, it goes really well. And I thought, wow, we're really clicking. 30 minutes in, that guy asked me, um, so Philip, what sets you apart? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bingo, right? Now I can bring yeah, it. Right? Here we go. <laughs> and I immediately jump into that story. And it's a good story, I feel. Well, something curious that happens. I somehow see that, that CEO, he starts to look down a little bit. Like he's almost seems like he's a little bit embarrassed. After the call, he just says, all right, Philip, uh, thank you. We'll be in touch. Okay. And I just sit there. <laughs> What just happened, right? I thought this was going extremely well. Where did that go wrong? (laughs) So I called my sister and we listened to that conversation. What she told me, Philip, you're focusing way too much on big storytelling, right? This TED type of storytelling, but that's not relevant for sales. For sales, you need these much shorter, more actionable stories. And so when I realized that with her help, I thought, let me look into all the stuff that is out there. What I realized quickly is all the courses, books that I've consumed before, they focus on big storytelling, storytelling that is not useful for sales. When I when I recognized that, I thought, let me look into this. Let me try to solve that. How can you share authentic stories in sales? And that's when I interviewed, I think, what was it? 71 sales leaders on how they use storytelling effectively in their sales conversations. Oh, th- this is good stuff. And I hope you'll unpack this. And here's the first word I started thinking about when uh, you started sharing this is micro stories. I don't know why that word came into mind, but it's just short stories, micro stories. Is What's the framework behind this, if you could share? 
Yeah, let's talk about that. And I actually like micro stories. I never use that word, but it fits really, really well. Okay, you can um, use it now. Go ahead. I'm throwing it your way. <laughs> Sorry, now you got you. it. <laughs> Our gift to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I call them connection stories. And I think Ooh, micro yeah. stories so- sounds a little bit more sexy. Um, now, how does, it, how does it work? Every single day... We're, we're meeting people, right? And every single day we're being asked, uh, so, hi, how are you? How are you, Larry? Or how are you, Daryl? Right? Every day we're being asked these questions. And now what do we do in these moments? Most of us just go like, yeah, uh, the weather is a little bit bad right now. It's, it's raining here as always in Amsterdam, right? <laughs> so we talk about these very, very standard topics. Uh, we talk about weather, traffic, public transportation, just standard topics. And by talking about these, we're not building a relationship. We're staying at exactly the same level. And so that's where you can bring in these micro stories or these connection stories. So when someone asks you, how are you? Respond with a short, relatable story about, that shares a little bit more about you as a human. Uh, should we give an example? Please uh, do. Absolutely. So how are you, Philip? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Daryl. Um, really good. I had a very interesting experience yesterday. Yesterday I was biking through Amsterdam and then I went into this bike shop to get a a new front light, a new back light and a new bell. And now I know this may sound super, super simple, right? But when I then went outside, I was the happiest person on this planet. I've been pushing that out for years and years. I didn't get it. And when I finally fixed it, it was just making me so freaking happy. Um, Anyway, what about you, Daryl? And when was the last time when, I don't know, you just got happy for some small thing. Oh man, I'm so glad you asked that. (laughs) So it it had to do with, you know, those little holes in the wall when you buy a house and someone, you know, has hung a picture, but you don't have a picture hung there. I'm embarrassed to say, Philip, I went probably like three and a half years before covering one of these holes up. So finally last (laughs) weekend I'd had enough and it, it did, it felt so good. (laughs) <laughs> to uh, paint over that hole and clean up the wall. Hey, I love that story because um, you not only was it very relatable, it also showed me that, A, you live in Amsterdam, which by the way, everyone listening in, Philip lives in Amsterdam. How cool is that? <laughs> um, and I've been to Amsterdam. You guys have a couple bikes there. I think it's like Isn't three it? or four bikes per team. <laughs> in it's Amsterdam. like the biking capital of the world. <laughs> but, um, but I think that is so cool because the story was very relatable. But to me, and I'm not sure if this was intentional or not, but the, the story also had a really big subtle point. And that is, you're going to feel a whole lot better when you take action to fix a problem. I don't know if you intended that or not, but I certainly picked up on it. Mm -hmm. That's great observation there. And with that story, also great job on responding there on the spot. (laughs) Thank you. Um, It was a true story, by the way. And I did feel terrific. (laughs) Yeah, I can imagine. I just have some holes in my wife. (laughs) You stop nagging me about it. You make me feel not very guilty, Daryl, because I'm looking at my side there. (laughs) That's good. You'll feel better when you take action. Yeah, no, for sure. And with these stories, you see, could I tell it better, right? Could I share more polished stories? 100%, right? But these micro stories, they're not about perfection. They're just Mm. about breaking the ice a little bit, building that initial connection, and mostly getting the other person comfortable to share a story in return, right? Because now I know uh, Daryl's story there. One year later, I'll probably ask, so Daryl, what's up with the holes? Any yeah, other sure. more- the holes in your wall do it. How the holes in your wall do it? <laughs> but we've already now built that initial connection. It's much easier to connect after that. You know, and, and what I like about this, Philip, is this let's just face it, there's some awkward moments in that first conversation with somebody. So if you're a seller and you've set up that very first appointment with somebody, now this could be either on a virtual platform or if you're going face to face, is we have to we it's almost like we have to reprogram our mind because as sellers, we're coached and trained, hey, this is how you open up the first couple minutes of a of a meeting. Well, as a buyer, they're trained on how they want to open the first couple meetings, Mm -hmm. first couple minutes of a meeting. So how can you break down, just break down and coach a seller or sales leader on what are a couple of things they can do that breaks that mindset a little bit of, hey, I have to give this a try because I have to break the unconventional or the conventional ways I've been Mm -hmm. coached. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And it's tough, right? We're often we're fighting here against conditioning for years, right? Yeah. We're used to respond with, oh, good, how are you? For like 30, 40, 50, 60 years, whatever it is. <laughs> maybe so even it, longer for Larry. Maybe oh, <laughs> I knew it was, hey, we're, we're, only, we're only a couple <laughs> podcasts into the new year and freaking Amy already took a dig at me. Sorry, Philip. <laughs> are we going to have fun around here? So go on. <laughs> Larry's but, yeah. very, very conditioned. He's very conditioned. He's very conditioned. But yeah. this is tough. Yeah. Larry, we're used Larry, to this, this is for right? you right now. Larry's just asking <laughs> okay. for himself. <laughs> hey, okay, Philip, I'm going to lay on the virtual couch now. You just coach me, right? Coach me along. <laughs> no. So um, let's first talk about how you can actually do that, right? Let's first talk about how you can share these connection stories and then how you can bring them into your day to day. Okay. Yes. So when you share these stories, first think about, hey, these are short, relatable stories that tell us something about you as a human. Uh, that can be something interesting that has happened lately. Maybe some new skill that you've picked up, or maybe even that small thing that annoys you, but is still funny to share. The options are really infinite. So anything that is up to you, anything that is more personal than the weather or traffic or uh, public transportation. Then sharing the story, that's only one component of that whole piece. The other component, and even more and important, but even more challenging part, is the question that you ask after that. Mm -hmm. Maybe you notice uh, the question that I asked right now, Daryl. And um, I think I asked something across the line. Hey, when was the last time you got very ha happy about some small thing? Mm -hmm. So for these questions to work, you want to ask a question where one, the other person can respond, so it's relatable, and second, that they can respond with a story. If I just ask you, so uh, Daryl, uh, what makes you happy? Well, you don't respond with a story, right? You just respond with something. Maybe not bad, but you don't respond with a story. You don't get that deep into to know the other person. So think about a question that would get a story in return. That could be, for example, hey, um, what was your most fun trip this year? Or, I don't know. When was the last time you spent some time with your family and how was that mm -hmm. for you? You see? So the questions, they're really the toughest part that most people get wrong, um, mm -hmm. but they just wrap up this entire connection story in the most beautiful way. So one, share your story. And then second, share a question that gets the other person comfortable to share mm -hmm. a story in return. The simplicity of this is so beautiful, but as you're saying that, I'm just thinking of the what what happens is you're building a friendship you're sharing stories right as you're uh, building a, maybe or even a romantic relationship you go to dinner and you share stories and um and so doing this in in small chunks at the beginning and, and throughout the the relationship in sales i love one of the things we talk about a lot here at selling from the heart is humanizing or rehumanizing the sales process, especially for our friends in B2B sales, where it can be so, um, you know, we can lean so heavily into the, the business side of things. Um, and, and we wonder why we struggle to close business and to, you know, get return phone calls and differentiate and all those things. We never made that heart to heart connection. And, and there's something about the stories we tell your story about the bike shop, you know, it humanized you, you're a human being, you have a bike, you, you forget to do things, you put stuff off, like all of that was very, very disarming. What's another example of a, a story that you could tell at the beginning of a, uh, an interaction with a client? Um, what, what, what's, what, what are you seeing out there? Cause you do this all day, every day, and you're coaching folks on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another example could be, most of us, we have some sort of new experiences, right? Mm. Uh, I, for example, one or two weeks back, I went to my uh, Kung Fu class one of the first few times. And uh, so I arrived there and I thought, hey, this will be fun. And I don't know, 10 minutes later, I was just being choked there. Like, oh, I don't know how much fun this is. <laughs> just like selling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, so then I could share a short story about that experience. And then I could mm. ask the other person, I could ask you, hey, so when was the last time you tried a new hobby or activity and how was that for you, right? 
And so um, the options are really every single day mm. something interesting happens. And at the beginning, we're a little bit awkward. We're like, ah, oh, I don't have these big moments. You don't need to have these big moments. The tiny moments that touch your heart, they are incredible moments yeah. to share. So one exercise that one can do to train yourself to spot these moments is an exercise called Homework for Life by Matthew Dix. He's the author of Storyworthy. So every single day you sit down and you reflect upon the one moment that touched your heart, the one moment that stood out a little bit, that was a little bit different than others. Then you just sit down, write down the date and that one moment. And now you do that for some weeks. And at the beginning, it's like, oh, today I went to work. Awesome. Today I had cereals <laughs> for breakfast. It's, it's meaningless. But after some time, you realize, hey, I have thousands of stories that can, thousands of moments that can be turned into beautiful stories. So after some time, you spot more stories and you get more mindful of the stories in your day to day. I I just was thinking about this and I want to throw this your way and just get your thoughts on this because I'm a big believer in in let conversations go or conversations go. Well, it's uh, to me, it's just like an artful blend of personal and business. So in the very beginning, it could be a business story to connect. It could be a personal story to connect. But I'd be curious your thoughts on this is now let's just say you're 10, 15 minutes into a really good business conversation. How could you segue just for a moment to pause and put the brakes on a business conversation to say, hey, you know what? I got into thinking, how could you weave in another personal story into there just to kind of kind of um, I guess to maybe it's the intermission in your conversation. Do you get where I'm going with this mm-hmm. is because yeah. we talked about it in the beginning. But how can a smart seller use this in the middle of a conversation to take the break from business and get some more personal? Got it. Okay. So in these moments, I probably wouldn't share a purely personal story. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't just share, ah, I went to a bike shop. Yeah, went. no, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but there I would share to share a story that is relevant right now to, to the specific situation of that customer. So example, we talk right now for 10, 15 minutes. I have a really good understanding about what you're going through. What are your struggles? And in that moment, I could say, hmm, very interesting. That one reminds me a little bit of a client that I worked with two years back. Should I should I quickly share what that client was struggling with? And um, yes, yeah, see, maybe if, if that's helpful for you. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then go into the story. It's still a more yes. business story then. It's not a 100% personal sure. story, but it's, it's a personal story because it's my experience. Yep. I think that's incredibly powerful. And my background was in software sales. And, and we would go and talk to non-technical decision makers about software. It was very intimidating to them. Um, and what I discovered was story was was extremely effective in communicating and, and not only communicating the value, but making them feel comfortable that someone else like them had, you know, taken the risk and and said yes to the software. And so those you know, that reminds me of ABC over at XYZ company. Uh, it, that's that, those, that line right there was, was super, super helpful because I thought story was fantastic way to take complex things and make them seem simple and then put a wrapper around it that made them feel comfortable that, oh, well, other people have done this and, and maybe we could do this. Maybe this wouldn't be an existential risk to us that we could you know actually do this and survive. And uh, I'm curious when you think about um, other, other ways to tell stories in the middle of the sales process, what advice would you give to our, our community here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there are a few options. And and the example that you just gave was beautiful, right? You just say, you hear something and you're like, ah, wait a second, this reminds me. So that's already perfect transition into your story. Mm-hmm. Another one is what you just said right now a little bit is, okay, when you are sharing, when you're talking about the values, when you're talking about your approach, at one point, your audience, they will want, or not your audience, but your, your prospect, they will want to hear why should they work with you, right? Maybe they are not asking that directly, but in some form or the other, they want to hear that from you. And when you sense that situation, that's when you can bring in, um, you know what, um, would, it be, would it be helpful if I quickly shared 
a little example that gives an overview of our approach or anything across these lines, anything that weaves it into the, the story there. Or for example, you get a, you get a pushback, right? Someone tells you, Hey, you're, um, you're too expensive. Well, in these moments as well, you can share then a story about another customer who had a similar, similar concern. Also thinking that you're too expensive, but then at the end was very happy that uh, he worked with you. And so that could be another one. So I would say the most common or the most powerful stories that you can tell in throughout the conversation, not at the beginning, is mm -hmm. one is success story of working with another customer that you usually do once you understand the struggles, then a value story to highlight what's unique about you. And then lastly, objection story. So when you get pushback, how can you overcome that with a story? Okay, Philip, now there's one more. So one more story. So we talked about the beginning. We talked about how you can weave this in in the middle. Now, as you're wrapping up that meeting and you're bringing it to a close, right? Mm -hmm. How could you enter? How can you interact with another story? I'm throwing you on the spot, but I know you can handle it. But we talked about beginning and middle. Larry, you know what? I don't have an answer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love the question. And you know what? I'll get back to you on this one because so far I don't, I don't use that many stories at the end, but it's not because it's a conscious decision and very, very honest among sure. here. It's, it's, I haven't given it much thought because usually I then just wrap up very quickly with the next, uh, with the action steps, but I'll give it a thought of how stories could be used. And I'll also talk to other, some other coaches, what they think about that. No. And, and I, I just threw this out mm -hmm. yeah, and not to throw you on the spot. And that was, and that wasn't the whole purpose of this, Philip, but we're just, you know, I got into thinking and it's just how my warped brain works is we're talking about, you know, connection stories and all this in mm -hmm. the beginning and how you can weave it in based on, you know, how the conversation has been going. But I know there has to be a play on how you can wrap this up. Obviously you want to wrap it up for a good next step and so forth, but maybe it's just simple as, Hey, you know what? This has been a great time that we spent together and all that. And just right before we go, I just got into thinking about, and then it could be dot, dot, dot. And maybe you just throw in another connection story. Yeah, that could work. What works especially well in speeches is often this callback, right? You start your story at the beginning, get everyone super excited, but you don't disclose everything. And then at the end, you share the rest, the remainder of the story. It's very fulfilling in speeches, but I think for sales, this would be way too advanced. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? It's interesting because I, I think of, um, of, of things I've coached salespeople to in the past. And also I think of we run our business on a, a platform called the Entrepreneur's Operating System or EOS, and we cast a three-year vision. And so at the end of our quarterly planning day or annual planning day, we'll always tell the story like, okay, we had all these goals for three years from now. Let's, let's, let's tell the story about what that actually looks like as if we're already there. And so, you know, it's, it's interesting just to brainstorm this, to think about, Hey, Philip, you know, as we, as we wrap this up and get ready to think about next steps to, to do all, to do all this way I see this is you know when this when this comes together successfully in 3 years from now or 12 months from now you know this is what the story is going to look like for your life or your <clears throat> your company or your team whoever whomever you're selling to and to actually craft this story of of them you know the way I see it dot 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 and I've used that um, in the in the software world as well where the you know the benefits of putting software in felt kind of intangible but when you started to understand the the opposite of all the problems they were having the problems being solved the story was actually really good um, you get to pull people into that so I, I love this concept you know, as, as uh, folks are, 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 are we're wrapping up, I've got one more question or observation, and this is for the sales leaders that are listening in. I believe that you've got salespeople on your sales team. Some of them are brand new. They don't have a lot of experience in terms of those middle of the sales stories about current customers. I've always been an advocate that sales leaders should, in every one of their meetings, have somebody share at least one customer success story. So you develop a repertoire of stories inside your sales team. Um, I'm curious your thoughts on that and, and what advice, other advice you'd give to sales leaders when it comes to nurturing and 
curating stories inside your company? Mm -hmm. I love that question because it's so relevant because 99% of the companies out there, they just have their stories in isolation, right? Mm -hmm. Um, There's one or two salespeople that maybe tell good stories, but the others just don't have access to that. And so uh, one first step is to collect them at a central location. And that's usually called the story bank. So Mm -hmm. you interview a few people um, on on their experience. And you don't ask them, ah, so tell me your best story because most people are a little bit overwhelmed there. But you ask them specifically about their experiences with the customer. So, hey, what was a customer that was happy working with you? Um, what did they struggle with? What did they feel? How did you help them overcome? What was their uh, life after? So you ask them very specific question that helps you extract that story. Once you've extracted that story, you then put it into that central location that you you classify it. So this is a success story that you can use for this and this industry. And then you just continue building that story bank. The beauty is that that story bank, that's that's your knowledge, your IP within the organization. Everyone that works in the organization can just go in there and check it out whenever they can and use these stories in their conversations. So I'd say to build that um, that story bank is very, very powerful. It takes some work, but it's really helpful. The second thing that leaders can do to to have more of a storytelling culture is to make it a consistent part of the team meetings. So let's say every week, every month, we're getting together and it's a 30 minute meeting. And in each of these meetings, we just give one person within the team um, the voice to share their story, to share a success story. And just to have the stories on top of their minds, um, that is so powerful because when people see other people sharing these incredible stories, they're one more motivated to do better work, but also to use more stories themselves because they see the power of it themselves. So these are two things. One is building that story bank and the other one is just to have people share their stories at the beginning of the team meetings. Mm. Oh, this is so good. Okay. Story deposits, story yeah, deposits right. in the story bank. Story. You gotta love it. Uh, yeah, the, look, you, this is so incredibly powerful. And, and I know our audience is, is listening in going, wow, how can I get more Philip Hum in my life? How can I learn more <laughs> about the story selling method? So Philip, what can they do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. First, um, yeah, you can check out my book, The Story Selling Method, available on Amazon. It's a very short but very actionable read. Uh, the second, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I always love to stay in touch with people that love to share stories, want to improve. So my name is Philip, one L2P, hum, H-U-M-M. And then lastly, if you want to check out my website, website it's powerofstorytelling.com power hyphen off hyphen storytelling.com <laughs> that's it's awesome so we'll put all that in the show notes to make it really easy for folks hey listen i really really appreciate you sharing your story with us today this has been incredibly powerful thank you philip thank you so much for having me it was a pleasure Same awesome here. awesome Larry, oh. this is so good. And I, I got to say, as, as Philip's talking, I'm having uh, flashbacks. My mind is spinning in so many different directions. When you start to recognize, at least, and, and I'm, I'm recognizing that my most successful sales had story woven through them uh, throughout the entire process. And there's, there's something so disarming and humanizing uh, about stories that also can make things feel a lot more clear. And all of this leads to trust. And so, Larry, I think what we've talked about here is an extremely, extremely powerful and effective um, thing for all of us to look at incorporating to our selling style in, in this coming year. You know, absolutely, Daryl. And there's two words that come to mind that just play on this. And I'm just a big proponent of this is how fast can you connect and how fast can you relate to somebody? Mm-hmm. And we do know this story. Story done well is a great way to connect to somebody and it's a great way to relate, Daryl. Uh, absolutely. Which reminds me, if you're listening to the Selling from the Heart podcast, we'd love to hear your story. We'd love to connect with you and we'd love for you to share your story. Um, one of the ways you can do that is by leaving a review on this podcast, on the platform on which you listen. It helps us uh, spread the story of Selling from the Heart and this movement of authenticity and trust in the sales profession. So, Thank you to everybody who is reviewing and sharing this Selling from the Heart podcast because together we're building this movement of authenticity and trust in this profession we all love. It's a new year. If you need some motivation, some encouragement, and to stay focused, go to sellingfromtheheart.net slash daily. 
And until next time, keep being genuine, keep being authentic, keep building trust, share stories, and most of all, sell from the heart.